Hello, my name is Mark Marnell from Bentley Systems, and in this video, I'm going to show how to create a corridor. So I am now in a file called 3 Corridor, and this file, as you can see, is referencing in the geometry that's been created separately, the horizontal and vertical geometry. And this geometry file also contains a super elevation section, so the super elevation has been calculated for that horizontal and vertical. I also have a terrain referenced in, and this terrain is it has been set to active, so you can see I can either clear it, but it has been set to active already, and that terrain file is just showing me also the, the original survey data. Because I've created the terrain as an active model, OpenRose Designer has created for me a 3D model called defaulty 3D in this DGN file. So starting off, I've referenced in my terrain, I've referenced in my geometry, and I'm going to create the corridor inside of this third file. So in the corridors tab, I'm going to select new corridor. What's the baseline? That is the horizontal geometry there right hand mouse button to use the active profile and I'll give this new corridor name of main road. If you notice a yellow outline has been displayed to show me there's the initial corridor limits. I've now asked for the template I wish to use and if I do alt and down arrow it opens up my template library so I could pick whatever template I wanted. I'm going to use this one, which on the left-hand side has a simple cut and fill slope. There's footpaths, and on the right-hand side it has a ditch or a simple fill slope. So that's the template I want to use. I'm going to start at the beginning, and I'm going to continue all the way to the end. Now, of course, you can put in different templates along a corridor, but in this case I'm just using the one. And I'll be putting in the drop interval every five meters. As there is only one template, I don't have to worry about transitioning between templates, so I can leave this start and stop at zero. And as you can see, it's now created the corridor. If I zoom in, just so you can see what's happening, it's asking if I want to add another template. I'll just go to element selection. So these yellow handles here are for me to pick a corridor the purple outline here is showing me the template drop so i put in a template drop starting at change zero going all the way to 1522 so that there is the 3d model showing in the 2d view so my default model is my 2d model i normally just turn off the display of the 3d model so you can see in the two dimensions the features that have been created. Now, of course, it's always nice to see the 3D model. So right-hand mouse button, let's go for plan in 3D. And there is my 3D model. So I've got the terrain, the existing survey, and here's my new corridor. As I zoom in, you can see the various components. There's my curbs, my footpaths, if I go into a bit of left-hand side, cut, simple slope, right-hand side, I have the ditch. Now, of course, it'd be nice to see that in section. So let's take a dynamic section, locate the corridor. We can just select the handle, and we'll go for window four. So from change um, zero, that's what we're seeing for the corridor. If I zoom out here, there's the blue line, cyan line, showing me the section. If I select the corridor in the 2D view, I can just drag this to wherever I want, and it will update the cross-section view. Now I'm here in a right-handed bend, and I know, of course, that the road should be super elevated. So all I want to do is add super elevation to the corridor. As I said previously, the person who was working on the horizontal and vertical alignment file had created the super elevation in that file. 
So I don't need to worry about creating it. I don't need to worry about calculating it, but I can assign it to the corridor. I select the super elevation section. There is only one, so reset to continue. Locate the corridor. Now the template knows which features have been set to be super elevated. So it knows I'm going to pivot around my center line and I'm pivoting the left and the right edge of pavements. So when I say okay to that, it will recalculate. And if you notice, the cross section has updated and these little magenta boxes are showing me that there is a point control been added to those features for super elevation. So if we select the corridor again and move back into our straight, right, you can see the super elevation has been added. I can do a very quick corridor report. Once again, locate the corridor to get a overall value for the cut and fill and the various component quantities. If the vertical alignment, the active vertical alignment was changed, the corridor would reprocess and update. And you could then very quickly redo another corridor report. One thing that's very useful to know about is the corridor objects icon. So if I locate my corridor, this panel will tell me everything I need to know about what's been going on with the corridor. So what templates I've um, used between what chainages. In our case, we've got two point controls for super elevation for the left and right edges. We don't have any external references or clipping references, but as you can see, you can get quite a lot of information about your corridor using this corridor objects icon. Thank you for your time. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.